Hello, my name is Goran Toprak from Serbia, Belgrade, and I go by two separate artist names, uh, Toprak for bass music and Modernate for Psytrance. You can find me on social media if you search Toprak Music on Facebook, SoundCloud, Instagram and Twitter. For my Psytrance project, you can search SoundCloud for Modernate and Facebook for Modernate Music. That's Modernate. That's Modern with the number 8 at the end. How did I get started making music? I started making music when I was 16. I had a friend who played me, I think, the first uh, Psytrance record that I ever heard. I think it was Oster Projection, People Can Fly. And after hanging out for a while with him, one day he played me some new trance music again from his Walkman. It seems so long ago that we used like tape cassettes to con con consume music portably, you know. And amongst those tracks, one of those was his. And the first realization that he made the track himself, I was very interested in how. I started the very next day and I used a program called Fast Tracker 2. Those were still like DOS times. I mean, Windows was out, but using a computer and audio samples to you know, make music was still majorly a DOS thing. So it took me like seven years to get my first track released. So why do I make music? Well, I think if I had to choose a reason, uh, it would be emotional. Uh, the real reason was that I wanted to have my music affect somebody else emotionally as other artists' music affects me. That was my, that was my main reason, my deal. What inspires me currently? Uh, well, currently I make many different genres of music for myself and others and clients who might require my services of, uh, you know, mixing, production, mastering. And the inspiration comes from good music I hear on the radio or basically emotions I have in my life at, at that time. What I'm listening to, I'm listening to dubstep, hip-hop, pop music, trance, techno, R&B, classical. Genres don't really interest me that much in, in, in the other sentence, just, uh, you know, organizing my music library. So what software I used in the past? Mm, well, since the beginning of my artistic involvement in music production, many, I think many software has passed through my hands, you know, after the whole DOS thing and Fast Tracker 2, I switched to a Windows bass tracker called Buzz. And after that, Cubase uh, was much improved, so for a long time I was a sworn Cubase user. And after that, Logic came on really strong, and uh, it was still while it was in the eMagic company, and it had a Windows version. So at that time, I used both of them in parallel. So five years ago, about five years ago, I switched to Ableton for all my production needs, and well, as of lately, that main spot has been taken by Lumen. So how did I learn about the basics of music production? Well, uh, basics I learned from also from my friends who was also music producers. You know, at that time, at like late 1990s, the internet was like still modem thing. It was really slow, and uh, there was no YouTube. There was no online tutorials. The such wonderful things that we have and use today. You know, so after that, I got a bachelor's degree in electrotechnics as an audio engineer, and then the story went on. So, what music technology products most excite me? Uh, I think that it's mostly the products that arise out of, you know, the processing power increase in CPUs, which makes many things possible, like, uh, you know, emulations of analog gear that was not possible before, and, and some really complex synthesis that was unimaginable to be done maybe even five years ago. For my favorite plugins, if I had to choose one, it would be Span by Boxengo. Uh, I wish I had that like a long time ago. It's my favorite analyzer, it's my go-to plugin, I use it always. And uh, I don't think I can work without it anymore. And others, it would include like many Waves plugins and some free plugins by a variety of sound, but I think that everything else is just interchangeable. So how has Lumit changed my workflow? Well, most of the change I get from changing DAWs. You know, it's from changing to any other DAW. It's it's mostly about the workflow. It's uh, mostly about song arrangements. There are always certain things that are easier to do in one DAW than the other. And then, you know, it's it just changes the way you construct your songs. And, and, you know, I tend to follow the line of less resistance always. So would I recommend Lumit to other producers? Well, I definitely would. And I think that most recommendation would come from a really fast learning curve. I think it took me two days maybe to get the hang of like every functionality it had to offer and start using it efficiently to have a whole track done. So what makes Lumit unique? 
For me, uh, the differences in DAWs are mostly in the workflow they offer. And I think the workflow will limit this really quite fast for me. And uh, I mean, not to mention that I can use it on a touch screen uh, without no problems. And the interface is already quite optimized to handle that. So I think that this big studio from the future with a big touch screen, you know, as the main console is just a couple of touch screen enabled monitor discount prices away.